Welcome to my 12th video on reinforced concrete design based on Eurocode 2. We continue with the analysis of section. Same textbook, analysis of section. In the previous video, I'll stop at this page. I explained why K cannot exceed 0 0.167 for, sim for single reinforced section. The question is, what happens if K does? I'm going to look at it, it now. When the value of k exceeds k balance, which is 0 0.167, compression reinforcements are needed. To do that, we add the compressive reinforcements to the previous stress strain diagram. Here we go. This diagram should be quite familiar to you by now. It is a section of concrete beam with tension steel. Let us start by adding the compression steel here. The two yellow dots represent the compression steel. We call their cross-sectional area to be AS prime. And the depth of the from the top to be D prime. And its corresponding strain to be epsilon S C. From the right diagram alone, we can tell that epsilon S C must be lesser than the maximum concrete strain. Now let's do the same to the stress diagram. What you see is a stress diagram for single reinforced sections. When we add in the compression reinforcements, we get another compressive force represented by the black arrow. We call it FSC, representing steel force at compression at that D prime from the top. Now we have three forces. At equilibrium, the force pointing to the left must be equal to the combination of forces pointing to the right. Let us expand this equation. From the previous video, we know how to expand these forces too. The first and the second is from the previous video. The third is the same as the first because the materials are the same. Only the area is different, AS prime instead of AS. As S equals to 0.8X and X equals to 0.45D for balance section, we get S equals to 0.82D. Put this into the equation, we'll get this. Okay, we'll come back to this later right now let's look at the moment of the tension steel how do we calculate the moment the, the overall moment is moment caused by the concrete force times its level arm plus moment caused by the compression steel times its distance to the tension steel which is d minus d prime the equation here is expanding rearrange we get this isolate as prime we get this is the formula we use to calculate the amount of compression steel we need let's go back to the equation of force we left over just just now if we multiply both sides with, zero, with z equals 0 0.82 d and rearrange, we get this. This is the formula for tension steel. I've shown you the formula for AS prime in the previous page. Add it up here, add it up and recalculate. We are able to find out the amount of tension steel needed. Note that the compression steel is always lesser than the tension steel. By the way, why is z equals 0 0.82 d? The answer is it is for balance section. Now let me repeat the procedure. Step one, find the compression reinforcement using this, and then use the answer to find the tension reinforcement using this. With these two equations, we know how much steel to put in. We are now back to the strain diagram. I have magnified the strain triangle for further study. Two horizontal lines, the top is 0 0.0035, which is the ultimate strain for concrete. The lower line is epsilon SC, which is, which is a strain for compression steel. Okay. 
using similar triangle, we get this formula and rearrange it, we get this. Putting the ratio of d prime to x on one side, we get this. On the right, we need the only unknown is epsilon sc. If you use for the for the ultimate u of u stress at 500 newton per millimeter square, the steel strain is 0.00217. We plug it in, we get x prime, we get a maximum possible value for d prime over x, which is 0 0.38. This limitation is derived from the geometry and the ultimate stain, strain for, con uh, for steel and concrete. If we substitute x equals to 45d in to the, to the, to the inequality, we'll get d over d prime cannot exceed 0 0.171. This happens because we want both the tension and compression still to be at their ultimate stage, meaning stress at 500 newton per millimeter square and strain at 0 0.00217. Let's consider one variation. What if you use steel of other grades? We can still get the ratio using the same strain formula. Other stress capacity means other ultimate strain. Plug it in that strain and we will get the ratio for, out, for stress less than 500 newton newton per millimeter square we can expect the ratio to be less than 0 0.171 this will provide the adequate safety check now what if the ratio is larger then we have to calculate the strain from the same formula and then we use the strain we, we calculated to derive the stress of the steel use, using this formula since the modulus of elasticity for steel is pretty standard, we can plug it in and get this. After that, we have to make some amendment to the compression steel at this, where we replace the denominator of 0 0.87 FYK with the stress we calculated above. What does it mean? The compressive steel does not reach ultimate strain and therefore will not produce the ultimate stress. Simply put, if you do not strain the steel to its ultimate strain, you will not, you will not get this ultimate stress. Since we amended the amount of compression, compression steel, we must also change the tension steel to this. So, disclaimer, this only works for concrete weaker than this amount. Now let's list down all the limitations we derive and review them. Start with the disclaimer. If the concrete use is stronger than C50 60, then this, all these derivations would not be applicable. What is that? So below this strength, concrete fails by the failure of cohesive bond between the mortar paste and the cost aggregate. The cost aggregate, which are basically granite, do not break. They merely got loose. However, if the concrete itself reaches beyond this limit, then the cost aggregate themselves will break. When that happens, we have a different stress strain behavior. This is why the disclaimer is important. We look at the first line. X balance over D must be 0 0.45 if we want both the compressive force produced by the concrete and the tension force produced by the tension steel to be at their maximum. We want to use up the capacity and not waste them. Likewise, the level arm cannot go beyond this ratio. Both this and the one above is meant for the full utilization of resources. This is the boundary between singly and doubly reinforced section. If K is more than this limit, it is necessary to put steel in the compression zone. This is what we have to check if we have compression steel. At this ratio, at this ratio, tension and compression still are at their ultimate stage, meaning we use up their full strength. We cannot have lesser unless we use lower grade steel. 
If the value is larger, it means the compression steel is not fully utilized. Then we have to amend the equation for the, the total steel needed. Can, this situation can't be helped unless we increase the depth of the beam. Finally, we have the maximum percentage of steel. As I've explained earlier, the term percentage is a little bit misleading. This is not the area of steel divided by the area of concrete because the letter D is not the beam depth. Nevertheless, this ratio, this formula tells us that single reinforcements, reinforced sections, for single reinforced section, there's a maximum tension steel we can put in because the concrete portion has reached its maximum. So adding more tension steel would not add to the moment capacity. This is the chart to get uh, for us to get the steel area. Vertical axis on the left is the moment imposed. Vertical axis on the right is the percentage of compression steel. Horizontal axis is a percentage of tension steel. Start with a moment, convert to K. From there, draw a horizontal line until it hits at least one of the curve. Whichever line you hit is a compression steel, percentage of compression steel. Then extend the line down and you'll get the tension steel, percentage of tension steel. There you have it. Yeah. You, when you can get the steel amount by bypassing all those calculations. That's all for now. For the next video, we'll try some work example.